Filming September's income by breaking down each income stream in this video was much more fun than how I usually did money diaries. So in today's video, I'm going to do the same, break down that nine income streams, stick around all the way up until the end to find out how much I made in the month of October. Let's dive straight into today's video. Let's go. The very first income stream is bond interest, but in October, I received zero dollars from this source. Bond usually pays out once every six months, twice a year. And in order to receive an income from this source every month, people used to invest into Singapore Savings Bond consecutively for six months when interest rates were higher. The second stream of income is dividend income. And in October, I received $108 from Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust. Just take note that any dividend paying stock usually pays out once every quarter. So it's not that I'm receiving an income every single month from the dividend stocks that I've invested into. The third stream of income is interest income. From money market funds, which is chocolate finance, I received $69.39. For those of you that are still on chocolate finance, just take note that from 1st November onwards, your first $20,000 will earn you 3.6%. And bank interest, I received $207.54. And in order to rack up that $200 from UB1 savings account, I have about $60 over $1,000 in there that belongs to me. The next income stream is digital downloads. I've listed my Notion Finance Tracker on Coffee. The Apple shortcut is included as well where you can double tap the back of your iPhone and track your expenses on the go while you're out and about. And I use that to track every single cent that I have. It tracks my net worth, my savings rate, my income, my expenses, etc. You can refer to this video where I've showed how it actually works. And in October, I received $455.69. For cashback, I received $66.95 of which $51.00 and 43 cents belongs to the HSBC Everyday Global Savings Account that gives me 1% cashback when I pay off my credit card bills. And for Trust Cashback Credit Card, it's my main driver right now because I'm done accumulating miles and I received $15.52 for paying off my medical bills which costs a total of $1,500 for MRI consultations, etc. This 1% cashback is the instant unlimited cashback that you can earn outside of your bonus category. So my bonus category is dining and whatever I've earned for that will only come when the quarter has ended. The next income stream is Google AdSense revenue. In August, I received $1,019.20 after taxes. Partnership affiliates, this is where I have agreements with brands and when you use my referral links in the description box below in my videos, I will get some form of income. And in total for October, I received $11,459.08. I can't break down this because as I mentioned, I have partnership agreements with them signed, I will not be able to break this down. And this includes income that I make as a financial consultant. Some of you have asked me whether am I still doing that. I am, but only when you guys reach out to me directly. That's the whole intention of me getting my license anyway. The next income stream is sponsorship income. I've gotten a total of $5,666.67 in the month of October. And as you can tell on the channel, October had a little bit more sponsorships from brands. For miscellaneous platform referral, these are all referral programs that is open to you guys as well. Anyone who has access or you are a user of these platforms, you have that referral if you refer your friends. So Utrip, I've gotten a total of $225. This was a $200 extra because they were running a referral price where you compete with every other Singaporean who is on Utrip and they refer people. I've gotten an additional $200. I just want to apologize in advance if the scene changes. I've been alternating different positions whenever my back starts to hurt. For those of you who do not know, I hurt my lower spine, went for surgery recently and I'm still on a lot of medications. So I can't stand for long, I can't sit for long and I have to lie down here and there as well. So my apologies on that. But continuing where we left off, the next miscellaneous referral is Chocolate Finance Referral. I've gotten $50. When you sign up using my link, I get $5. And it's open to any one of you who is on the platform as well. And lastly, in this category, it's Trust Bank Referral. I have released quite a lot of videos, three I believe, talking about Trust Bank's cashback credit card and how it's better as compared to Utrip or as compared to Yobi One in certain scenarios. This is not sponsored. Those videos are not sponsored, but I do get 
a scratch card, same like you when you sign up for that. And it's a sure win scratch card promotion that they are offering to everybody right now. If you get a scratch card, you scratch it, the minimum is $5. The highest people can get is $1,000, but I've not gotten $1,000 from it before. The highest I've gotten was $25. I can show you on screen right now. So when you use my referral code and you sign up because you feel that the credit card is applicable for you to spend here in Singapore or overseas because there's no foreign exchange fees, etc., then I'll get a scratch card. And thank you so much for using my referral code. Just being transparent here, it's open to you guys. Referring your friends, your family members, you will also get a sure win scratch card. So miscellaneous platform referrals, I've gotten a total of $1,250. So all in all, my income for the month of October came up to a total of $20,302.52. From the previous videos for September income streams, you guys asked me what is taxable and what is not. Interest, cashback, dividends are non-taxable and everything else that I've earned as a result of doing this business on the side is taxable. Prior to this year, it really didn't make any sense for me to try to gain any tax reliefs via cash top-ups to accounts like CPF or the supplementary retirement scheme. But this is something I'm truly considering this year just to lower my taxes. This part of the video is sponsored by Stash Away, but a little bit more about them later. The question is, am I going to be topping up my CPF or SRS. I'm still not too sure as of yet, but what I appreciate as a self-employed person is I get the choice to top up my CPF or not, or SRS. Last year, I top up $8,000 to my Medisafe account, and that gave me some tax relief. As of right now, SRS is something I'm leaning more towards as I can invest that money on my own, and it has a little bit more flexibility because I can withdraw before the statutory retirement age of 63, but subjected to that 5% penalty and taxes. If I really need the money, then this is something that I have the choice to touch. Just some background for those of you who are new to SRS. You are able to top up your SRS account for tax relief. Singaporeans get up to $15,300 tax relief. Foreigners is $35,700. The statutory retirement age depends on when you created your account. As of right now, it's 63 years old. And any withdrawals done before that age will incur that penalty plus taxes. So how much would I save? Just a hypothetical example. Based on this calculator, if I do the full top up this year to my SRS account, say my taxable income is $100,000. I top up $8,000 to my Medisafe again and make the full SRS contribution. I save a total of $1,611 by doing so. Choosing what to do with your SRS monies is really important. Even though you save on paying some taxes, if you left the cash there idle, the account will only earn you 0.05% interest so make sure you invest that money somewhere. Just take note that not all brokers will allow you to link your SRS accounts. Platform like Mumu Singapore or Tiger Brokers, they don't allow you to link your SRS. It's only available on selected few or robo advisory platform like Stash Away. If picking individual stocks was never your thing, that's where Stash Away comes in because you can invest your SRS money on the platform with fees from as low as 0.2% to 0.8% annually depending on how much you have in that account. So one particular offering for SRS investments on Stash Away is their flexible portfolio where you can build your own portfolio and invest in global ETFs like the S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100 or the Total World Stock Index Fund. Given the long runway that we have to the retirement age for withdrawal, it helps us to stay invested for the long run. You can combine a few ETFs in that one portfolio with different weightage and this helps you to stay diversified. There are also no extra fees for deposit with withdrawals or if you choose to change your desired allocation from the original, Stash Away will help you to realign the portfolio for you to the target allocations for free. For new users to Stash Away, you can get 6 months of free investing for up to $20,000 and this is applicable to all of their investment portfolios. If you'd like to find out more about Stash Away, link to that will be down in the description box below and thank you to Stash Away for sponsoring this part of the video. I will update closer to the end of the year my decision on whether whether do I do CPF top up or SRS top up. But as of right now, I think I'm leaning towards the SRS top up. How I'm actually allocating that fund in SRS will also be covered in subsequent videos. This is October's income stream. Stay tuned to the next video on how I spent my October income plus investments as well. I'll see you guys in my next video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below or direct message me on Instagram. Have a great way ahead. Bye-bye.